All right, I thought I'd do another one of these videos real quick. Uh, today I will go with the crankshaft. And uh, I know you're thinking, like, well, I can do it with a 69 crank or 76 or 78 crank or 74, something like that. But, uh, yeah, you could do that, but it's more like engine geometry. I'm not really concerned about the engine geometry. I'm like, you know, from a mileage standpoint, what can you specifically do with the crankshaft? And uh, there's basically two things you can do with a crankshaft. You can uh, modify it so that it uh, is more efficient. There's a couple of different things you can do about that. And you can modify it so that uh, you help to minimize vibration. Uh, you can't eliminate the vibration, but you can cut it back. And uh, I've got a couple of pictures. And go ahead and go with that. Oh, and uh, I've actually re recorded this intro. Uh, I apologize, but I got my finger partially across the sound during some of it, uh, and uh, so the sound's not really great. It works, but it's not really great. But uh, a little bit different, a little bit shorter than those other ones. Enjoy. Okay, hey, so here's photo number one. This would be your basic 69mm uh, crank. And uh, you'll notice that uh, it does not have counterweights. There should be a counterweight on the back here, counterweight back over there, counterweight right there and a counterweight back over on this side. And uh, a counterweighted crank would look like this guy. So you've got the counterweight there, you've got a counterweight here, here, and one over there. And uh, when you go this direction, you've got two things that you can address. One is friction. And uh, you're just looking at it going, well, it's a crank. There's not much I can do with friction. I've got to have one in there. What can I do? Well, there, believe it or not, there is something you can do with that crankshaft that impacts friction. Uh, in addition to that, you've got uh, energy losses due to vibration. And I know you're thinking, I put my counterweights on and I've impacted vibration. This is not really the case. Uh, let's go back to this one right here. This is balanced. In a flat four motor, I've got a piston. Let's say a piston goes out that way and out that way, and then uh, let's say this guy right here then is pulled in. This one's pulled in. But as they go back and forth, this pair of pistons are completely opposed, and this pair of pistons are completely opposed. So there's no there's no out of balance stuff as far as things that would cause vibration of the first order. So we're talking about first order vibration, something that's going to vibrate at the speed that the crank is rotating. That's what your force, if you've ever heard the term first order vibration, it's going to be the speed that the crank rotates. Uh, second order vibration is stuff that is caused by your pistons going ta -ta 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 Now the counterweights don't impact the pistons bouncing back and forth. The counterweights impact uh, something else. I mean, you do need them, and if you go and you read enough about it, they will tell you that the counterweights, of course, if you, run, you know, want to run these things, as your RPMs go up faster and faster, you have a tendency to get better performance from something like this. The counterweights end up uh, being a vibration damper, and uh, it's always good to dampen your vibration, but in addition to that, there are, if you look at, the, if you look at these as a pair of items, like I simply have these two, these two throws and nothing else exists. If I took these two throws and I spun them, these two throws would have a tendency to twist this entire assembly in this direction. And then in order to get it twisted back, you have to pull on it this direction. So these assemblies have a tendency to want to take the entire crankshaft and notice that these two would try and pull it this direction. And these two would try and pull it that direction. So that these two assemblies are gonna try and take the center main bearing, which is buried back down in there, and try and take that main bearing and take the main bearing and pull it, yank it. So you put counterweights on to preserve the life of your bearings by kind of trying to counteract some of this twisting that is caused by the throws. So it's a uh, it's a bearing life extendant uh, device. Um, doesn't really impact, like I said, it's not going to impact whether it vibrates or not. It impacts your bearing life. And we all want longer bearing life, life and uh, pretty much if you do anything other than a 69 millimeter crank, that guy right there, you get counterweights by default. Um, now, uh, there's the impact, like I said, of vibration. 
there is something else you can do. Let me jump to a different one of these cranks. I've got a different crank picture. All right, this guy right here. This is a high dollar. 84. I think this is an 84 millimeter crank. This has got some really big throws on it. But uh, they've taken the journals. These are Chevy journals. And the Chevy journal is considerably smaller in diameter uh, than the VW journals. And uh, one of the things that you get when you reduce the size of the journal, you get a surface area reduction. And with a surface area reduction, you get less friction. And when you cut it down in diameter as well, as the rod goes rolling around it, you know, the outside of your journal, or your journal is going to spin, but your rod basically just rocks. So you've got this spin going on inside of a rod that's rocking. So you've got smaller surface area, but you've also got this, uh, the velocity between the rod and this journal gets reduced. So you get this double impact. So it's actually like a, uh, it's a, it's a squared function. So if you can reduce the velocity of your journal relative to your rod, you can reduce friction. But you've got one, two, three, four bearings, which you're not going to touch, versus one, two, three, four bearings that you can reduce. So you can reduce the friction, but you can't reduce it a whole lot. But it is available to you if you go with Chevy Journals. And it's it's definitely something that I've considered doing is running a, a Chevy Journal crank. Uh, and uh, the other piece that you can do as far as friction goes is, is um, as your crank is spinning around and around and around, uh, of course, these edges right here, they interact with the uh, uh, the um, crankcase fumes and um, oil and whatnot, mist that's floating around inside your uh, crank, uh, sorry, uh, case housing. And uh, so what they can do is uh, you knife edge all this stuff. And I think a knife edge crank could be done along the lines of, hang on a second, there's a guy over on the Samba that knife edged his his uh, counterweighted crank, and that looks a little something like this. And he polished the crap out of this thing, so he's got really smooth edges in here and whatnot. And he spent like a bazillion hours doing that. Very impressive, but I would not go this route. Uh, let's go back to this guy right here. See, if you look at this stuff and you just go, well, I've got like uh, you know our crank spins. I believe they spin this direction. So I've got like a leading ed edge and a trailing edge. Leading edge, leading edge, leading edge. I can knife edge all the leading edges. And then I can, you know, kind of knife edge the trailing edges. And I can make it all spin around nice and easy. But why don't we completely and totally eliminate the edges? And if you want to eliminate the edges, that takes you over to something like this. And I think this is really cool. This is called a full circle crank. And if you look in through here you'll see that the counterweight goes all the way around. And it's welded in place. You, I think decades ago you used to be able to find, buy a, uh, a forged or a cast full circle. But uh, they stopped making them. And, uh, but if you want to have it done, you can, uh, you can have somebody build you one of these. And now you don't have a leading or trailing edge at all. Uh, in addition to that, you've got extra mass. This causes stiffness. The less, uh, you know, there's going to be less bending. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have that uh, that counterweighting anti-vibration wobble bearing extensioning thing, but it does have a lot of mass. And into that mass, you can damp any vibration. So even though it's not specifically designed to counter wobbles, it does have the mass that will counter wobble. And uh, if I was to do it, I think this is a really cool idea. And uh, I think if you look right there, it won't... It's not easy to see, but there's DPR. This was built by uh, DPR, which I think is a well-known uh, machine shop. It's out there in California, and uh, it's about 200 bucks. They can take your crank and do this for 200 bucks. So if you bought, uh, let's say, uh, I think you can get a stroker crank for about 200, and you could have DPR, put another 200 for 400 bucks. You have one of these guys right there. Uh, let's go take a look at something like. This, I think this is like a scat crank, and I think this is also a scat crank. Now, this is a scat crank that's had kind of knife edges put on it. So they've thinned this out here. This is thinner. Well, this is around a thousand freaking dollars right here, and you don't need that. This is a racing machine uh, crankshaft. Uh, you, know, you know, you take your basic cast crank, 
like a 76 stroke like what I've got or 69 just a stocker and uh, have it full circled like this for a couple hundred bucks and uh, I think you'd be better off if you wanted to go that route if you really had some money to play with I think you'd do that um, I don't see me doing it but if I was going to do it that's the way I would go is right there uh, let's go back over to the 69 millimeter okay we talked about that we jumped over to this guy right here okay this is your basic I think this is a double A cast crank and for a few bucks I mean, it doesn't cost too terribly much you can have the journals turned into Chevy journals but if you do that or it costs you a little bit of money to Chevy journal the thing it's not terrible but you've also got to get the rods and uh, once you get the rods of course because this end is smaller your rod your big end of your rod gets smaller and if that's smaller then you've got less mass and if I've got less mass buzzing around I'm gonna have less vibration and vibration is energy getting pissed away so when you go to the, uh, the Chevy journals you get less friction but you're also going to have less mass less vibration uh, the sad part is is that you do have to spend a few bucks on those rods but they're not terribly expensive this, these things used to be expensive back when I used to do this back in the 80s but uh, thanks to guys like the AAA guys man wow I mean, it's amazing what you can get I mean I'm not saying you want to take take my modifications you want to go racing with them although Chevy journals is definitely something the racers do but uh, I'm not saying you want to full circle a race crank I am saying you might want a full circle a mileage motor and uh, you know if you're gonna lighten your rods lightening rods is good for racing it's also good for mileage so I think that's a that's a good thing to do as well that's about it I don't think there's too much more you can do uh, like I say if you want to go stroker non stroker um, that's that's kind of geometry that's a different topic and uh, I can always get into that later there's some interesting stuff in that but uh, yeah I think that's good enough for for, for, for crankshaft. Later.